without uh, further further delay. On the webinar with me today is Chris Merckx. Chris is going to be using the questions window on the right hand or on the on your screen. So feel free to type in any questions along the way that you might have, uh, and we'll some questions Chris will be addressing right away in the chat features. Others will I'll be answering at the end of the uh, presentation. So. Thank you for taking the time and joining us today for this presentation. Um, it's something that I've been talking about for about a year and a half ago, about a year and a half, and um, feel pretty passionately about how things are moving in the diving industry with regards to e-learning. So without further ado, I'll get started here. Okay. So approximately a year ago in June, I got a phone call from Mark Young, who's the editor or publisher of Dive Training Magazine. And Mark said, hey, I'm going to be in your area. I want to come by and visit with you because I want to talk to you a couple of things. And this is nothing abnormal for Mark to come by and talk to us at our offices here. And I talk to him about once a year, a face-to-face -face meeting and stuff. He says, well, I need to talk to you. So he shows up and he says, I need to talk about something to you. I'm going to be writing an article. And I'm going to be writing an article about um, and putting out data with regards to how e-learning is failing the industry. And I said, oh, okay. And he goes, well, how do you feel about that? I said, I think you're right. And he was surprised by that. He was very surprised and taken aback by my comment on why I believed um, he was correct. Um, because he wasn't getting the same type of responses from people. Well, he had done some data and collection with a number of dive retailers across North America. And the, these are some of the quotes that came out of it. The trend to encourage online and resort-based training could be hurting the industry significantly. Okay. The most, most respondents in his surveys came back. They preferred classroom training over e-learning. Then you take into consideration the DEMA certification numbers, um, total divers certified over the last two years, open water, and this is North America, or actually United States only, or U.S. citizens only, she had been showing a trend downwards. Now, since this slide was created, we finally saw a tick upwards in the first quarter of 2016, and I just got that data yesterday. So, but over the last few years, it's been steadily declining on each thing. So, Mark was trying to find out if e-learning was actually um, one of the causes on it. Well, I had an opinion on this um, with it, which I'll be getting into later on why. But let's talk about some things with regards to what's going on in the e-learning industry. About 4.3 million undergraduate students, or 20% of undergraduates, took at least one distance learning course in 2002, between 2007 and 2008. Now, that's old data, eight years old. So, but this is some statistics that we found very interesting. Traditional classroom versus technology-enabled training uh, completions. Traditional classrooms, you can see the trending from 2006 to 2009. More and more people are going technology-enabled uh, classrooms um, as we've gone through the years. So with old technology, you go, or old statistics, you go, so what's really going on now? Well, here's another um, interesting statistic that I found. It was estimated that 46% of all college students are taking at least one online course. However, by 2019, roughly all ha half all college half of college students will be e-learning based. E-learning is not going away. It's getting more and more prominent. It's a billion-dollar industry as it is right now, um, and there are more and more entities that are using it for um, uh, for educating of uh, staff and personnel. Little side note on this to tell you how far e-learning has gone. In 2012, SDI was contracted to write the um, to write and launch an e-learning platform for all the call operators for 911. Uh, if you were a 911 call operator uh, in the state of Florida, you would have to go through the e-learning course, um, which somebody gave us the content, and we launched it on our platform. So that will get to give you an idea on how far the, um, the how p companies and things are looking for it. The U.S. Coast Guard implemented a very substantial e-learning platform years ago and had a conference in 2000, I think it was 11, on how maritime and getting captain's license over e-learning was going to change over the years. 
So it's become very much more popular uh, throughout. Now, with anything, once you start, oops, sorry about that. Once you start something, initially, it is uh, you find ways to fail at it. I apologize for my Disney references here. I have a seven-year-old, and uh, I watch tons of Disney movies all the time, and we're almost through the end of it, so to bear with me through my Disney caricatures here. But, yes, the past can hurt and the way we see it. You can either run from it or learn from it. So that's why I decided to start speaking up about how the industry is, how e-learning is failing the industry and what we should do about it. Okay. The other thing I thought I'd show in my presentation is some interesting statistics about SDI's e-learning um, program. But let's a little bit of history. Okay. Self-study has been around for a long time. We started e-learning in 2001. We've learned a lot of ways it doesn't work. Okay, we have a take-home. Uh, there's been take-home study programs in the diving industry since the 1980s. CD-ROMs in the 1990s, um, and lots of plug-and-play training videos. For those who have been in this industry uh, for a number of years, you remember all those videos and all these different ways of delivering information um, to students. E-learning was a com culmination of a lot of that. But here's some other interesting statistics here. 66% of all e-learning courses are open water in the SDI system uh, for us. 13 are computer nitrox, and then everybody, all the other courses that we have in there take up the remaining 21%. The majority of the people want to do open water with e-learning. That'll give you an idea on the market penetration for what is popular from general courses. His certifications follow a very similar trend regardless of whether they were e-learning or not. Eighty-seven percent, and this is one of the statistics that um, Mark had put out in Dive Center Business, and I think his statistic was lower than this. It was somewhere at seventy percent. Mark said that all students who signed up for open water um, didn't complete their classes. But we went back and looked and compared how many people went through full certifications to how many people actually um, signed up. And our statistic was 87%. So that's a pretty good statistic. And then 91% of everybody who signed up for computer nitrox uh, in 2015 completed their training. It's a little bit higher. The reason it's a little bit higher, I believe, is computer nitrox. You're actually a diver at this point, and you're interested in learning. So it's why we see a little bit of an uptick there. So what did we learn? What did we do? Well, I'm here to tell you that in 2001, I would go out there and say, e-learning shortens the classroom because the student did all their academics online. We promoted this, and we, get, and we talked about it this way. Lots of, and we said e-learning replaces the classroom in 2001. We said you can fast-track them to the pool where the real e-learning e begins. Well, you know, I said we learned a lot. We failed a lot of the ways. And we stopped saying this in approximately 2004, but much of the industry has not stopped saying that. And that is one of the main problems. So we found a whole bunch of different ways to fail. The problem is not e-learning. The problem is how we define a classroom. And this has to do with the demographics and how students look at a classroom here. I'm 44 years old, I'm a Gen Xer, somebody says to me, you're going to go in a classroom, I picture a dry erase board um, with uh, desks in front of me and an instructor, if they're good, in front of me, teaching using color in their dry erase board. Okay, that's a classroom to me when they said to uh, this. To the millennials that I work with here, a classroom is any area where teaching is taking place. So the definition of a classroom depends, and there's a picture of my classroom or a classroom and many of us can relate to this many of us have been in the industry a long time have sat in these classrooms just like this this is what a traditional classroom looks like how do we fix it how do we make e-learning more effective 
we flipped the classroom. And this is becoming very popular within universities around the country right now. And what I mean by flipped classroom is, in a traditional classroom, the instructor prepares the materials to be delivered in the class. The student listens to the lectures and other notes through guided instruction. They take notes, and then they have a homework to demonstrate they've understood it. In a flipped classroom, the instructor assigns the learning to take as a take-home study. The student watches and listens to lessons before coming to class, and the class time is devoted to applying what they learn in a more high-order thinking test. Students receive support from the instructor. Now, people say, I know, I've, uh, we've all witnessed it. You give somebody a book, you tell them to read chapters 1, 2, and 3, and you say, have those chapters done by the time they walk into the classroom, and um, have the answers questioned, and they don't. They're running, they're trying to scramble and get the last-minute thing done, uh, last-minute work uh, done before the classroom. So students aren't motivated by a book. But we have seen in our studies that if you give a student a 90-page manual, the open, our open water manual, some of them will get the whole book done, but some still don't get the questions done um, at the end of the chapter. But if you give them an e-learning, in many cases, they will get the whole class done before they even come into the classroom. Not just well, chapters 1, 2, and 3, not that, because they go through it. Now, if I was to print all of the content on open water e-learning and put it in a book, it's over 400 pages long. They'll read 400 pages with e-learning before they will go ahead and take a uh, uh, read 90 pages in a book. People want to get the e-learning. It's more interactive. They enjoy taking that rather than reading a book, especially people under the age of 40. So you flip the classroom. Once you've flipped the classroom and assigned, given the work up front or the e-learning up front, and you tell people you teach differently, you flip the classroom. The classroom of the future, not really, is what you implement when they come in for that higher level of learning. Put a circle of chairs in the middle of the store. Go over what items they struggled on. Review key concepts. Okay. Get rid of your classrooms and turn your classrooms into showrooms. Okay. Stand at a repair counter to go over how a regulator works rather than pulling apart a regulator right in front of them. Go to the compressor room to learn how the cylinders should be handled and why. Don't talk about it. Don't put a picture up. Don't put a slide presenter into it. Actually have them go into the room, see how it works, and fill a tank in front of them. They gain it, and they learn more by experiencing, especially if they already know what's going into the tank because they finished their e-learning prior to it. Spend time at the counter going over environmental considerations when diving. These are just a couple of ideas, but you're thinking outside the box when you're presenting the program, when you're teaching to them. Visit the boat in the back of the store, spend more time at the quarry, do a slideshow of things divers will see underwater. Okay? Rather than talking about and teaching by dry erase board up front, because 10% of what you say to their students in front of that classroom, they will retain if it's the first time you give them the information. This is the big thing. E-learning's real purpose. E-learning was created to allow the instructor more freedom to teach, not to reduce the amount of time. That is the key component. We've talked about instructor to student interaction and e-learning takes away from it. People say, ah, they, you know, I'm not teaching e-learning because I, you know, I want to have my time in front of the class and standing to it. We've never said to reduce, we, we're not saying to reduce the amount of time. Still go over the presentations, but deliver it in a different manner. That's when true learning takes place. I will tell you right now that if you stand in front of a classroom and you go through it, we all have had students, um, without going through e-learning, that they don't retain the information. We're just trying to get them the ability to pass a test. True learning is not taking place. So, use the extra time that e-learning allows you to to focus in on the real issues, okay, that are presenting, um, 
that are uh, uh, hitting the students are struggling with. So in 2016, we turned around and we decided e-learning, you know, we needed to up the e-learning. One of the things we've consistently heard um, from students was that they didn't have the ability to have answer questions along the way. We had a button on it and we still have a button on it, ask your instructor a question and it'll pull up an email browser, but that wasn't instantaneous enough, okay? So what we did is we launched a chat with an instructor and the way it works is on the bottom right hand side of your every um, page on our window our website there's a little pop-up window it says ask your instructor a question in a minute I'll pull it up and I'll show you in real time the way it works so that they can communicate directly you have direct communication with the instructor this was a major issue with students and have said they miss 35 years and younger the instructor will be HQ personnel currently right now we're running during office hours uh, during the uh, during the right now our intention is to hopefully get to 24 7 um, throughout by the end of the year we're having to bring on regional offices and regional managers uh, to help us with this uh, monitoring this but we're putting a, a, an instructor on the sign with them all the chats are all recorded so what does this mean why do we record them well we record them so the instructor, um, so the instructor, we can turn and send that chat directly to the instructor um, that's teaching that student, because the HQ instructor can see who the student is, where they're chatting from, what dive center they're taking their courses out. It allows us to know the instructors they're taking the course with, and the equipment they'll be using, i.e., brands the centers use. We've been training our staff, internal staff, our instructors on staff here how to look things up as you're communicating in real chat time. So for instance, if for um, I think uh, DJ uh, is on the phone here, Dan Howard's on the uh, webinar with us. DJ, we, if we knew one of your students, or Dan, if one of your students was on, online and started chatting with us, we would pull up your, um, the instructor on staff would pull up your website, take a look at what brand you're um, using at the store, and as we're communicating with them, um, we can we will not sell for you, but we will not say anything about a brand if they ask us about a brand or we'll endorse brands that come up that you're currently using. And all of that chat that goes back and forth is sent on to you in an email that says, this is what we chatted about and this is everything. So when the student comes into the, uh, the dive center the next day, you say, hey, I understand you chatted with Jesse at SDITDI. Um, things went well, glad that you had these questions. So it's like an extension of your instructional staff. Instructors, we're not referring them to other dive centers or online stores. That's why HQ instructors are doing this. We've been training the personnel for a few months. And let me show you how this works. For those of you who don't know, I am currently, actually I'll jump out of this. I'll have a little fun here so you guys can actually see my profile. Oh. Brian's still in the middle of taking the open water course. Yes, I am. <laughs> those of you who want to record my uh, username and act a password right now, please do so very quickly. Hopefully this works. I'll give you a hint, it's a Disney character. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm all still, also still enrolled in decompression procedures too. So um, the only thing I've been able to pass is advanced adventure. So I'll go to my course. I'm in my course. And I'm on chapter 8. The window down on the bottom right hand side now chatting hello and I wait and I wait and I wait because it should take a minute and hopefully somebody is monitoring the chats hello Brian this is Chris he can see who it is and I how
and then Chris can answer the question. Uh, obviously, I give Chris a tough question, he'll struggle over it. But um, this is how this feature works back and forth. Um, and then we can just um, record and take a look at this. What's interesting about this chat feature that we're doing is not only do we can look them up in our main database to see what e-learning course they're in currently, um, just based on uh, the in basic information that we get. The chat feature allows us to get the person's name and what part of the world they're communicating with us. So it allows us to drill down and find out other information without the student actually knowing it, which helps us track down exactly where they are um, in e-learning. And then that allows us to let the, let us know what the who the instructor is. So I see there's a number of different questions that have uh, popped up here. And Chris, you seem to be yeah, so the uh, number one question, or the first question came from Rick, and uh, it asks, um, one of my main questions about e-learning is how to sell it, assuming Brian is going to tell us e-learning is not an excuse to cut contact hours. If I don't reduce contact hours, my price has to remain the same. How do I convince students to invest another $130 for e-learning? For Advanced Nitrox Deco course, it's $260 additional. Uh, for Advanced Nitrox Deco course is 260 to, so one of the things is, yes, is, is $130. Um, you take the, the cost of the course, they, you're selling it to them for $130, so that $130 is part of your time. You, to the SDI, TDI, it's a, only a fraction of what you're buying it from us. It's approximately the price of a book or whatever. So you're just moving part of the cost back and forth uh, from here's an e-learning package that's part of your open water course fee does that make sense um, I don't know if it does because you're making that money anyway yeah Brian that was actually going to be my answer as well uh, suggesting that they pre-purchase the online kits from us whether they buy the kit itself or just the code which will save them an additional five dollars uh, and then simply apply the cost of that to the course. Um, they don't have to spend the additional 130 or 260, which, uh, Rick, I think you mean by buying it separately online first at retail? Uh, that, that was a confusion to my question. And if you'd like, you're always welcome to um, respond to that, and we can answer that in, in detail. just want to have a better idea of the question that you're asking. Pre-purchasing codes greatly reduces the amount, uh, cost on that, so it's just pretty much the same, very close to the same of buying uh, student materials like books and things like that. Okay, so Rick's question is yes, if they do buy it online. So Rick. Uh, I'll use the example of the 130 here for the e-learning. Um, the specialties uh, are 129, and you actually are getting a credit back of $70. So that's where you would see that difference. Uh, you apply that difference now to you know, your cost. Um, but as Brian mentioned, if you want to increase the profit rather than wait for them to purchase uh, the online programs, uh, from our site or from your website, uh, I always suggest that you pre-buy them and sell them directly to the student. The reason why you have the ability to sell online is so that you can sell 24-7 when your doors are closed, uh, you know, someone gets an itch to buy a Nitrox class at 3 in the morning, and they're able to do that. Richard, you asked a question, is the chat currently only available on during uh, during office hours? Yes, the answer is that, but we're currently negotiating and talking with, or not negotiating, we're currently working with our UK office and our Australian office um, to try to figure out office hour times to coordinate between the two. This will only be English-based um, chat. However, we have been using the chat feature on our uh, main website since I think it's June of last year, and we are communicating in multiple languages already internally at headquarters. Google, I mean, Google Translate is a wonderful thing uh, when you're doing a chat. It works really well. So we're able to help out in multiple languages along the way with the chat, even if it's only, uh, we only have English-based people online. So the next question I think comes from uh, Rich Denmark. 
you say, uh, where are the students having the most luck studying um, on a desktop, tablet, mobile device? And do you have any uh, info on where they're studying? Well, it's a great question, Rich. Um, I do have some statistics on it. It's actually quite funny. And the time of day was one of the things that I was really interested in uh, for a, I have statistics on time of day. Let me rephrase that. Um, and most people are on their e-learning and hitting it right around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, right before they go home from work. And that's, yeah, I use that as East Coast time. It's a, tr it's a definite trend that's gone on. We see another spike at about 8 o'clock at night. Um, East Coast time is when we see um, more people populating on it. It's the most popular. However, the fact that e-learning is uh, becoming more global for us, we've just, uh, in the last six months, we've launched it in three other languages, German, um, German, Portuguese, and Spanish, we're seeing some timing changes based on a bit wherever you are in the time, the time of the year. Now, our statistics on tablets and desktops and things like that, we last year we made uh, the website, I think it was in uh, July, we launched the website as mobile compatible um, or mobile responsive more appropriately. And our mobile connectivity and people hitting it has gone up exponentially uh, from tablets and or um, phones. We don't see a lot on phones with any learning, but we are seeing an increased amount of time spent on tablets within our uh, within the e-learning platform. But the statistics right now, it's still trending upwards. It's still brand new because we've only been doing it since July. We'll probably have pretty much better data come December, I mean, come DEMA timeframe, November timeframe. So you should see something at that time. And, so. and Brian, and also just to add uh, that the it, it may be a little harder to measure um, simply because the way our system is created, you can actually start taking your class on your phone, then move over to a tablet, and then go on to a desktop, and then move back to another device. So you can use multiple devices for one course. Yeah. So, uh, Rick, you also asked a question with regards to, just to clarify, buy my coach $40 and or whatever and resell the students or they can buy it from the TDI website of 129 and 70 dollars um, is credited back to my account yes it's either credited back or you request a check and we send you a check for that additional money there is a different purchasing plan with regards to codes and stuff like that now uh, Chris do you want to clarify on that for pricing sure so um, the, the price break is actually going to be a little bit different depending on the uh, courses themselves um, off the top of my head, I'm not sure if I have the ones for TDI, but I think it's 135 and the dealer gets about 55 back. For open water, it's 119 and the dealer gets 60 back. And for all the SDI specialties, uh, including rescue, uh, it's 119 at retail and the dealer gets 70 back. Uh, the different price breaks for your purchase to us is going to be roughly between $35 and $45, depending on two things, depending on the kit and the components that you want, or depending on your pricing level. So remember, the more that you buy from us and the more business that you do with us, the better pricing level you will earn. Uh, does that answer that question, Rick? I'll let, I'll let Rick ask you another question there. Uh, and it looks like Gary Lee, what about UK? We have different hours. Gary, absolutely, we're looking into that and we're communicating with our UK office on getting them on board with the chat feature because it is a, a global thing we can use this chat. It's just a matter of um, that office having the ability to have staff on board. So we're going through training right now with them. Our plan is to have this available in the UK sometime this year um, where, on their hours. It's currently available approximately 8 o'clock in the morning East Coast time through 6 o'clock in the evening East Coast time or New York time more appropriately. So our intention is absolutely to get it into Europe um, and allow uh, UK to be, have the same type of chat avail available to them. And Brian, just to interrupt you real quick before you go on to the next question from Alain, uh, uh, from Darren Pace, who's also on this call, uh, for the overall site traffic, it's uh, 61% desktop and 39% mobile slash uh, tablet. In um, uh, 2012, it was only 9% mobile tablet, so there's been a huge growth of about 30% in the last four years. 
Uh, Alan, uh, nice to hear from you again. I hope everything's good over on that side of the uh, Gulf there. Uh, TDI overhead manual is around $40 and the e-learning is around $130. Uh, why the huge difference? Well, if a student buys, it's like uh, we're selling e-learning online at the full retail. If the student buys the pro uh, product at $130 from us, um, we give, I think it's $70 back to you. Um, so the difference is uh, they, they're buying it at full retail from us, and we're, we're just you know giving the money back to you. That's why there's a difference in that price. If you buy the manual from us at $40, you're then sending it to the student. So, and, and it's just part of your course. Yeah, the, the behind that whole philosophy was basically to encourage the dealers to purchase it from us so that they could see better return on the investments. Yeah. I, I also want to point out that um, we have a feature pretty much e-learning codes can be bought so long as you're communicating directly with somebody, either a phone, email, or, um, or even getting text to ask questions now um, during throughout different times around the world. So if you say, hey, I got a class starting tonight, can I get my codes? Um, you contact us during the day, we will get you your codes right away. As soon as you place that order, we create it in their email directly to you. So you don't have to go to your students, oh, I have to wait for delivery of kits, I have to wait for this to go. You can do it last minute rather than having them stand in your store and pay $139 or $130 online, us collect the money and then we have to give it back to you. You can just call us and say, hey, I need a code. Okay, we'll get it to you in about five minutes, done. So. Um, and we ship those codes out pretty quickly for the retailers. So, all right. Um, looks like Alan. What is the price I should set them my, myself? Then, um, is there a fixed price that you want me to sell it? No, we don't fix prices. If you're selling the e-learning, you can uh, the e if you buy the price if you buy the code from us you can include the e-learning um, as part of your course fee or you can sell it as a, as an add-on now we publish the full retail prices the add-on online on retail so your students will be able to find the answer so if you charge more than that um, you know it depends on how you package your courses is up to you on the selling and the price uh, for that material Yeah, just to add to that, uh, Alan, it's about the value, you know. Uh, so you have to add all the additional components to what a course is. If a student wants a breakdown, you're more than welcome to provide it with them. But when you simply purchase the codes from us, you're just adding that to the whole uh, cost of the course. So is any uh, any further questions there that anybody may have? Well, if not, um, I'd just like to say thanks for everybody for attending. If you haven't had a chance to attend one of the webinars on the members update, we're doing approximately four to five of them right around uh, each quarter, uh, and and feel free to sign up for one of those where you'll see a major increase in uptick in webinars throughout uh, from SDI TDI over the remaining uh, remainder of the year. It's a big part of our business future and communicating with our members on a regular basis. So if you think there's a topic that you might want to have some more information or other people be interested in, feel free to send it on to us and we'll try to put together a presentation on it. Um, I will be, you know, doing a presentation sometime. Uh, I'm doing a presentation at Saturday at Tech Dive USA. Um, about releasing um, certification data and just how big the technical diving market is. We will most likely have a webinar on that in the future. Chris has got a couple presentations coming up with regards to the business of diving um, that are available to our members. And once, I get, once again, I said the members update um, are extremely popular and um, we have 30 some odd people in this year. We're just finding webinars that are that much easier and we can communicate and get that much easier uh, information out to our members in a fast time. So if there's something you'd like to hear about or know about, feel free to ask. Oh, it looks like we've got a couple more questions that she's popped in. Offline comment, what I'm hearing is folks do not know how to cost um, price courses. 
in the instructor course, do you teach instructors or how to cost out the classes? Yeah, so we do an overview on that. It is part of the business of diving. Um, and Chris, this sounds like it'll be a good topic for a webinar. On yeah, I agree. Courses, um, yeah, it's right. something we can definitely get into. So, Especially adding all the different options with the e-learning components. Yeah. Uh, Rick, current price list for North American members is going up on the website. I think we're in our final edit right now, um, and it should be up soon. Chris, do you have any? I'm almost positive it'll be end of today. I just gave a final thumbs up to Lauren. Okay. All right, good. Sorry about the delay on that, Rick. We just had a lot of new products that we wanted to include. Full uh, face mask, side mount. <clears throat> yeah. Jim Gregory, is there a leave message option for the chat after hours? I believe so. We have that feature on. You could just go ahead and say I have a message and it'll automatically pop and create a message window for us when we come in. Um, the other thing is is um, we have the contact us page directly there and we're responding to those pretty quickly on that form. So All right, if there's no other questions, um, I appreciate your time, and um, we will hopefully have a chance to talk with uh, many of you. Feel free to call us, email us, or um, chat with us, however you want. Love hearing from members. love hearing from uh, opinions on things that we can do to improve and help you guys run your businesses um, out there. Uh, and I look forward to seeing some many of you very shortly. Thank you, Brian, and thanks, thanks everyone, for joining us. Thank you, and everybody have a good day.